Regina is not my last bus stop. She knows I will marry again. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, you are welcome and please subscribe and turn on the bell so that you will be notified anytime I put up a video. My returning subscribers, thank you so much for coming by. May God Almighty bless you for supporting me. I don't take your support for granted. So in an interview, Ned Nwoko granted by BBC Ibo. He said Regina Danes is not his last bus stop and she knows he will marry again anytime that he is not done. Hmm. Wow. After six wives, he still want to marry more. Hmm. Okay, guys, let me leave you to watch the video. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your support. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye. I've been a lawyer all my life. I studied uh, law at the University of Kiel in England. I, that was my first degree. My master's, I was at King's College, University of London. Then I was called to the English bar as a barrister at law of Lincoln's Inn. Um, first, as a practicing solicitor in UK, I had many big briefs. Uh, from Nigerian government, from Moroccan government, from uh, Ghana government, from British government, from various governments. You know, my, my focus at some point was were just countries. So when you work at that level, uh, you can determine your fees. Um, yes, I, I wasn't, and, but when I was working for the masses, I was practically doing that uh, either on legal aid or for nothing, uh, just um, supporting people, helping people. Um, but, you know, th there are lawyers and there are lawyers. It's not just about, uh, um, I, 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 even though I still have my patent certificate, but I, I don't go to court anymore. Uh, I work as a consultant now. Just like, as you, as you know, uh, even doctors at some point, they become consultants, uh, which is what I do. So uh, as a consultant, I determine my fees. But the kind of work that I do, are very specialized and that is why I can determine what I get paid very few people will do what I I do uh, for instance the issues th that led to Paris Club refunds uh, has to do with uh, um, loans taking over uh, time and the repayment of those lo loans and the wrongful deductions or over deductions as the case may be not every lawyer will have the benefit of knowing what was wrong in a country like Nigeria, and then being able to take it to the Western world, challenging them in courts, uh, in UK, in America, in Austria, in, uh, um, in France, in, in Switzerland. Uh, but uh, if you know the level at, at I was operating at, at that point in time, you know, you can imagine governors, governors of states, like uh, Boni Haruna of, of uh, uh, Adamawa State, uh, Nyame of uh, um, Taraba State, uh, Governor Kure then of uh, Niger State, uh, Pito B of uh, Anambra State, um, Elechi of Ebony, and so on and so forth. These are, these are governors that were coming to my office in London and we're going to court with them on these matters. So, and they were, we're talking about huge matters. And I was at the forefront. You know, I, I gave them the confidence that all I needed was their support, their backing, to be able to stop the wrongful deductions. Because what was happening was sad. The fact that so many states' allocations were practically going towards servicing loans that had been overpaid over time. So we had to stop it. But I give thanks to Obasanjo as well, who listened to me. Obasanjo then, uh, General Gusso, the National Security Advisor, then uh, the General Abubakar, the Mohammed Abubakar, the Chief of Staff to the President then. So I had the support that I needed back home. And then coupled with the, you know, um, official support and, and backing by the governors. So we're able to get, get cracking. And, uh, my fee was not based on uh, 
I, you know, uh, my fees were determined by, by me at that point because um, the, the states were not paying me. I, I told them it was a uh, no win, no fee basis. So I, I was charging a percentage of whatever um, was recovered. Uh, the same thing when I also had to work for local governments. All the local governments across the country never took out any loans. They never did. And yet, the m money due to them were subjected to first line charge deductions, where um, they, they, they were taking money from them as source to service loans that they didn't uh, take. Yes, uh, they did not take at all. Not even benefiting for they did not take. And so I, I felt that um, I could help them. And again, they didn't fund the litigation. They didn't know that it was possible to stop such deductions as source. But I told them, look, my work will do many things. First of all, it will stop these wrongful deductions, which it did. And secondly, it will refund all the previous wrongful deductions, which also happened. So if I was charging 20% as I did, um, they were happy. They were happy because uh, this is uh, like a win, a windfall for them. They never thought there was this opportunity. And uh, so it, it takes just being, it's not just about being a lawyer. It's also being at the right time, at the right place, and knowing what to do, what to do for the people. Um, my programs have always been people-oriented. Regina, uh, our marriage is solid. Our marriage is based on um, understanding and uh, respect uh, over time. I, I, I met her and I liked her. We married within three weeks. Yes, within three weeks. I married all my wives within some period. Um, I, I don't believe in dating anybody to marry them. Don't date anybody you want to marry. Marry them. When you marry them, you begin to fall in love from within the marriage. You know, even in our, my own culture, as it were, as a kid in the 60s, people, they were not dating. They would, they would marry, in, in arrange marriages, family to family, they, they choose a wife. And then most girls were expected to be virgins when they get married. And uh, they build a family from there. And because they didn't know each other before they got married, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of learning to, to, to do. And, um, but Regina and I is a story that is interesting because before I met her, I didn't know about her. I don't watch movies, never watch movies. Um, I met her the first time when she came to my house with her mother and her siblings to because my, my place in Delta is a tourist place. They came to look around and uh, I, I, I liked her and, and that was it, you know. So whether I marry another wife or not, is, uh, it, uh, she knows it can happen. Um, I come from a very polygamous environment myself. Um, I love children, so I want more children. And she knows this, and my other wives, they also know it. So we'll see what happens in the future. Umwan, you do everywhere. Umwan, you do everywhere. That's why at night, you have a lot of them, no zone four, zone five, zone six. As na fabo a show. Obroko fa na facho, ima show, obna economy, the the adro good for them. Okwa, these are the the ills of the society now that. Uh, but as a one man, one woman. Before the advent of Christianity, our tradition allow, Igbo tradition, allow for many uh, wives and, uh, and, and children, of course. And that, that determines the size of uh, the wealth you have, isn't it, in those days? So you see an, an average Nathana marrying two, three, four. They're helping the women. They're helping the society. Uh, but the, the fallacy of it all is that uh, 
uh, yes, religion and uh, Christianity doesn't allow that in, uh, in the South. And yet, the average Southern man with 10 girlfriends, you know, so, so you don't, the, 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 the irony is, is so stark. I love my culture, my, my cu culture as I know it, not, uh, not at, as they're trying to uh, dilute it now. You know, I, I love culture. Igbo culture is, is wonderful and, and should be promoted the way it has always, uh, has always been. But even looking at that, look at even your, your population in Nigeria. Just look at, at the economy of, of, of marriages, what I call economy of marriages. You, uh, as an Igbo man, you may one wife. And maybe you have four children. Onye Ugu, when four wives, each wife when have five children, that's how many? 25 children. In the next 10 years, 20 years, you can look at the population. Just imagine the population of Onyugu, Ndugu, and Ndi, 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 what it will be in the next 20 years. The population will be like one to, one, 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 one to five, isn't it? Because of this disparity. Assuming that we are the same now, I'm just saying, but we are, but we are not. The, the gap is getting bigger and bigger. And Igbos will never catch up because of this self-imposed restriction.